Hi, and welcome back. Oscillator sync is a classic trick in the synth sound design toolbox. But what is it exactly and how can you make good use out of it in a modular synth voice? We'll have a look at classic oscillator sync sounds, but also explore more unconventional setups. Rhythmical drones. Self playing patches. And playable voices. For this video, I'll use my Nano Synth voice again. I approached Nano a while ago because I'm very excited to use this compact voice for a couple of videos. All topics and thoughts are completely my own, but full disclosure, they did send this setup to me so I could make those videos. If you'd like to learn more about it, I made a video in which I explain why I love it and I go over each of the modules in this case with a lot of tips and things to look for when you're building a starter voice. You can watch that video here. As always, if you'd like to support my videos or you want to get access to PDF sheets with hundreds of patch ideas I used in my videos, have a look at my Patreon. You can also support my channel through affiliate links in the video description. But now, let's dive right in. Just in case you forgot to read your synth manuals this morning, here's a quick recap. To create oscillator sync, you need two things. First off, an oscillator with a sync input. When used, that oscillator is called the follower, because it's forced to follow the frequency of another source. That other source can be anything with a hard edge shape, like a saw or square wave signal. But for melodic purposes, you want to use another oscillator. In this video, I will use this left oscillator as the leader. So I patch its square wave output to the sync input of the follower oscillator. Let's have a look at two waveforms, a square wave and a slightly faster triangle wave. Both are free running with their own steady frequency. So because the triangle wave is a bit faster, it's producing a slightly higher pitch. When you patch the square wave output to the sync input of the triangle wave, the core frequency of the triangle wave doesn't change. But the square wave effectively cuts off the triangle at the start of each cycle of the square wave. How the sync triangle responds to this depends on the type of sync used in the follower. Some types are forced to reset the wave from the start. Some types of sync invert the waveform instead. In either case though, the now more complex wave shape created by the follower oscillator has the same length and thus frequency as the leader, although often with interesting overtones and harmonics due to the complex shapes. Tuning the leader will change the audible frequency of the follower, and modulating the follower can lead to interesting and unconventional sounds. Modulating the frequency of the follower oscillator is key when working with oscillator sync. Let's start with a couple of ideas for simple looping modulation. Here's a raw patch to hear the clean sync effect. One oscillator is used as a follower and this oscillator is connected to a VCA for some volume control and then an outboard mixer. The second oscillator is used as the leader, sending a square wave to the sync input of the follower. In this setup, the left oscillator is the leader, the right one the follower. To get those classic sounds, tweak the frequency of the follower. To get a wider range, let's patch an offset voltage to the 1 volt per octave input. This is the sound of a triangle wave, but other waves give different results of course. For example, the square. The core idea is to use some modulation to the frequency of the follower. For example, with a simple LFO or looping envelope. This brings lovely wave shaping and artificial harmonics into the dynamics of your sound. Yeah. <laughs> 
But let's turn that into a more musical setup. Here, a filter and VCA are used after the follower oscillator. A sequencer is creating a melody for the leading oscillator and the triggered envelope is used opening the filter. Tuning the leading and following oscillator in different ways has a wide range of effects. And again, adding a simple modulator to the FM input of the follower adds movement to the patch. Oscillator Sync is great for complex harmonics and adding texture to sounds. But instead of listening to just a follower, you can add a mixer to the setup and mix both the leader and follower oscillator together before the filter and VCA. In this patch, a sub oscillator output of the leader is used to add a lot of low end to the nice sync sound harmonics from the follower. Experiment with different modulation shapes and speeds. Here is the same setup as in the previous patch, but an audio rate modulation source is used for some FM style metallic sounds. The LFO is sent through a VCA used as attenuator to have good control over the modulation depth. Any kind of modulation you can add to setups like these are worth exploring. For example, bring back the slow LFO and have it modulate the pulse width of the follower oscillator. And you can modulate the VCA to have the depth of the audio rate modulation fluctuate as well. Remember that in these setups, the leading oscillator is responsible for the tuning and thus creating the melody. Instead of sequencing the leading oscillator, you can sequence just the follower. This will result in a more steady pitch because the sync speed doesn't change. In this setup, the sequencer is effectively modulating the wave shape. These basic ideas can be extended with more complicated modulation. Here's an example with the same dual oscillator setup and the sequencer creating wave shaping by modulating the follower. The speed is pretty slow and the sequencer has some slide to it. On top of that, the pulse width of the follower is modulated with an LFO. The frequency of the leading oscillator is modulated slightly with another LFO. The filter is modulated with yet another LFO and for the final punch, the triangle wave of the follower oscillator is sent to a VCA and back to modulate its own frequency. The modulation depth is controlled with another free running LFO. Of course, you can also sequence both oscillators at the same time. This can lead to more controlled sounds. Modulating the frequency of the follower is still crucial in this setup, and the coarse tuning of the follower as well.
To complete this series, you can sequence both oscillators individually using different sequencers. In this setup, the sequencer tuning the leader is creating the melodic sequence, and the sequencer tuning the follower is creating a wave shaping effect. In the illustration and patch, the one fold per octave input of the follower is used, but remember the leader is creating the melody. Instead of looping modulation, you can use envelopes to modulate the frequency of the follower oscillator. This gives modulation that's more rhythmically integrated into the sound. Here is the same basic two oscillator voice again, with just the leading oscillator being sequenced, and a mix of two oscillators through a filter. Instead of using a looping envelope or LFO to create continuous movement, you can use a triggered envelope to create movement. A simple way is to multiply the envelope already in the patch and use it to modulate the FM input of the follower oscillator. When sequenced, short plucky envelopes work especially well with softer shaped waveforms like a sine wave. This can give nice, wet, resonant filter-like transients. Of course, you can still add LFO modulation to add longer movement to the patch. Here's the same patch, but this time a copy of the envelope is sent to a VCA first, before modulating the frequency. The VCA is modulated with an LFO. Also, a square wave is used for the follower oscillator with different tuning. Just like you can do with a filter and VCA, it's interesting to have the sequencer trigger two envelopes. This can give you individual control over the filter and frequency modulation. Experiment with different envelope settings for each section. The sine wave is used again, so you can clearly hear what's going on. You can experiment and expand with multiple envelopes to build more complex sounds. In this setup, one attack decay envelope is triggered by the main sequencer, modulating the filter and frequency of the follower oscillator. A second gate sequence is used to create triggers with a different pattern than the main clock. These are used to trigger an even slower attack decay envelope, modulating the filter, and a short plucky envelope, modulating the frequency of the follower oscillator as well. This is great for slow generative sounds.
Here's the exact same patch, but with a faster clock and envelope settings. Because all the envelopes are in sync, it's great for rhythmic sounds as well. And here's the same basic patch, but this time with a keyboard and controller. Both the leader and follower oscillator are tuned with the 1V per octave signal to create a stable sound. A full ADSR is used to open both the filter and VCA. And finally, the mod wheel of the keyboard is used to modulate the frequency of the follower oscillator. This is a pretty classic synth patch found in lots of non-modular synths. Instead of sending the mod wheel directly to modulate the frequency, you can add a mixer to expand the possibilities. For example, you can make another copy of the envelope and send that into the mix. This can add a nice transition to the sound. You can also add an LFO if you like some continuous modulation as well. Here's a small variation, where the 1V per octave signal from the keyboard is sent to a slew limiter first, and then the leader oscillator. I know quite some people like tuning both oscillators and sync patches, but I prefer the rawer sounds when just tuning the leader. So again in this patch, the follower oscillator stays untuned. Adding more modulation can add more depth. In this setup, beside the ADSR envelope, the keyboard is triggering two attack decay envelopes, each with a different length of attack. This adds nice phased modulation to the sound. A copy of the mod wheel signal is used to open the filter beside the envelope. This opens the filter when you add harmonics to the waveform with the wheel. When using the modular, you can experiment with more unconventional patches as well. I'll stick to using just the basic synth voice for this video, but here are a few starting ideas. Instead of sending the sync signal from leader to follower directly, you can send it through a VCA. This way you can turn oscillator sync on and off with another signal, like a clock division or just an unsynced LFO. In this patch, a sequencer is used tuning both oscillators, and the oscillators are tuned in a nice harmonic so the sound is pleasant even when oscillator sync is turned on. The filter is modulated with another LFO for added movement.
instead of syncing the follower to another oscillator, you can sync to any signal you like. For example, a steady audio rate LFO. This can create nice drones and free up the oscillator for other things. In this patch, the square and sub octave of the follower oscillator are mixed and sent through a filter in VCA. A sequencer is tuning the follower and triggering an envelope opening the filter. The second oscillator is used as sine wave LFO and modulating the FM through a VCA. Another LFO is opening that VCA. A copy of the result is modulating the filter frequency as well. And finally, a sub octave of the oscillator used as LFO, or effectively a clock division of that signal, is gating an ADSR envelope modulating the filter resonance. This is also great for percussive sounds and obscure rhythmic noise. Here is basically the same setup, but the oscillator is used at audio rates, again through a VCA modulated with an LFO. This gives more classic FM-like sounds. Because the oscillator is running at audio rates, another LFO is used to gate the ADSR envelope, modulating the resonance. All these patches are just starting points and I hope they inspire you to make variations. Here's an example I didn't plan for but ran into by just repatching the 1V per octave sequence from the follower to the modulating oscillator. Remember, the follower oscillator is still synced to the steady audio rate LFO in this patch and not the modulating oscillator. If you have more patch ideas for oscillator sync, let me know about them in the comments. If you haven't yet, make sure to have a look at this video about the full nano system or browse through my modular videos in this playlist. As always, smash that like, subscribe and bell button if you want to see more modular content from me. But that's it for now, thanks for watching and see you next time.